In this week's Forex video, we're going to discuss the USD JPY and more importantly, what am I going to do as a US Forex trader now that FXCM is banned from the United States? All right, guys, so before we jump into the charts, the, the topic that is most important and has really eaten up a lot of my free time over this past week is FXCM being banned from conducting business within the United States. And I guess what I mean by doing business, I'm, I'm speaking in terms of being able to be a Forex broker. If you look on, on here, you can pull it up anywhere. Um, just type in FXCM, FXCM banned by the CFTC for taking positions against its clients. Now, I know a lot of people on the forums have complained in the past about FXCM trading against them. And to be honest with you, I have never made more money with another broker than I did with FXCM. The only thing I regret is I've only, I was only with FXCM for probably a year and a half. Before that, I was using TradeStation, and then before TradeStation sh um, sold their Forex business, or I should say IBFX sold their business um, and got out of doing business in the U.S., I was pretty much all the way integrated within FXCM at that point. I started off a little bit small because I read a lot of you know real negative re reviews about FXCM, so I was a little skeptical about opening up an account with FXCM. So I had a little bit of money in TradeStation. I had most of my money in my bank account and I put a little bit of money to work with FXCM and I started to watch the fills and you know the pip spreads and I was extremely happy. I was a little bit nervous at first because FXCM charges a commission per transaction where in the past I was used to having the transaction reflected in the bid and ask spread. So, you know, it was a little bit hard for me to get used to that I was going to have to pay a commission, but the fills that I got were phenomenal. I couldn't, I really cannot say enough about it. So that leads me to a dilemma. Now, I've been doing a lot of research looking for a broker over this past week. And in the U.S., we really only have two options. One of them is going to be Forex.com, which all FXCM accounts are going to be sold to Forex.com or Gain Capital. And the second option is Oanda, which is kind of funny because TradeStation, when IBFX closed down their business in the U.S., they sold their accounts to Oanda, and I closed out my Oanda account. And before I even placed the trade, to be honest with you, um, I was a little bit frustrated with um, trying to learn their system and even trying to log in at that point. And I was already with FXCM, so I just went ahead and closed out my Oanda account. Well, now, since I only have two options and I did look around, um, I was reading a little bit on the internet, looked at Trader's Way. I just, I don't feel comfortable putting my money offshore. I'd really keep it with the U.S. where, you know, we do have regulations and I feel my money is a bit safer in the U.S. Now, if I was only looking to trade with a couple hundred dollars or maybe even, you know, one or two, maybe $3,000, I would maybe take a chance and put some money in Trader's Way, but you know, for me, it's just not worth my risk. So I'm left with the dilemma. What do I do? Do I, you know, if I pull up the reviews on forex.com, they're, they're horrendous. And I don't know if that's just because they're so big and, you know, there's a lot of traders that simply do not know how to trade the forex market or are the reviews really authentic and they really have a lot of issues. So how I've decided to combat this is, I'm going to open another account with Oanda, which, you know, I wish I would have kept the other one open now. And I'm going to let my FXCM account transfer over to Forex.com. But then I also have a third option, right? So I don't only have one plan. I have a backup plan and a, and a backup plan to the backup plan. You know, as Forex traders, we need to take our trading or treat our trading as a business. And, you know, as a business, you can't just simply shut down because, you know, one of your suppliers, you know, quit producing whatever it is that you're selling. You have to find another way to meet the customer's needs. Well, as a Forex trader, I need to be able to engage in the Forex market. 
So I need a broker. So my third option is, let me go ahead and close this out real quick, is I'm gonna open up a futures account. I used to trade futures in the past. Um, I really focused on the E-mini and the Russell 2000 back in the day. But you know now FX for the CME, they have the 6E contract, which is right here. And that's gonna represent 100,000 units of currency, which is basically one standard lot. Again, I'm gonna have to pay a commission. Commission is $4.48 round turn because I have a NinjaTrader lifetime license, which not bad. But now I have to pay for a data feed as well, which you know FXCM provided me with a data feed, but you know that's all right. We, as a business, you gotta look at the numbers, just like in your trading, you have to look at the numbers. How much are you willing to risk for how much are you trying to make? All right, you have to look at your cost and costs are very, very important. So I've basically broken down the cost in the simplistic form. The, the Forex spot market with FXCM, I was paying for the Euro dollar, $8 commissions per 100,000 unit um, size. Now, some of the currency pairs that I trade, it would have been $12 round turn, but I always want to, I always want to look at um, the worst case scenario. What's the biggest hurdle I have to overcome? So trading the 6E contract, the same unit size, 100,000, my commissions would be $4.48. Now the savings on that would be $3.50. I have it right here, $3.52. Now, my data fees are gonna be right around $60 per month. So if we do the math on this, 60 divided by $3.52, I, I need to place at least 17 trades just to be back to break even, which would be no impact as far as my transaction cost on the trade. Now, one of the benefits that some of the futures are gonna have is, you know, I don't have to worry about, you know, huge bid ask spreads or so I hope. We're gonna see as I start to study that market a little bit. But, you know, we're gonna, I'm gonna be able to analyze the volume a little bit more. And, you know, to be honest with you, looking at volume is part of the reason why I wanted to switch over to FXCM because they had the largest um, amount of retail traders and they had a, a better representation of volume than any other Forex broker that I was looking at. So I'm gonna be able to look at real volume and it's gonna be the same. Everybody looking at a futures contract is gonna see the same exact volume as I see. It's not gonna be broker dependent. Now, this is gonna be something in the works. I'm not gonna just jump and start switch my whole account over to futures. I'm gonna take it baby steps. But as I've been looking through the charts and back testing and, and seeing how I look and trade with the bias and the levels and, and so forth, it's it's gonna be you know a seamless transition. I've done a lot of market replay um, trading over this past week and you know I really don't see any any change in performance as as I as compared to the spot forex market. Now this week alone I placed 15 trades. I had 11% gain in my account. Fantastic. So I basically would have to place two more trades this month to break even. Now, what if I double that, which I already have? Let's say I place 30 trades. Well, now I've saved money on my transactions cost. Or if I'm trading, um, if I start trading three contracts of the Euro futures, fantastic, right? 300,000, uh, 300K lot size. I'm gonna, I'm gonna even, have to place less trades in order to save money on commissions because this data fee is fixed. So every transaction that I place above 17, I'm gonna be ahead of the game. Now, one thing as I was looking over the futures contract that kind of piqued my curiosity a little bit is they also have mini accounts. So they have the Euro mini, which the commissions on that are a little bit less. It's a little bit less per, per tick and then they have the micro. So I'm gonna be studying these markets as well once I get my data feed um, up and running. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna really see how these smaller markets move as well and the commissions on the smaller size is, is a little bit cheaper. So it's definitely something I'm gonna look at. Another benefit that I can have as far as trading the futures or having two Forex brokers. In the US, we are not allowed to hedge we are not allowed to hedge in the US, which I think is a disadvantage compared to a lot of other Forex traders. Because if I have a long-term swing trade, and I say long-term, I'm talking a couple days, weeks, 
Um, what if I want to hedge my position over the weekend? So in case we get this huge gap, well, now I can, I can do that either through the futures account or through the Forex account and, you know, Forex, they, they pay rollover each and every night, or it gets deducted out of your account. So another method I could do is, you know, the Forex pair that has higher rollover. If I want to, um, uh, participate in some carry trade, I could buy that currency pair, profit the interest and sell a futures contract to hedge me against any downside potential. So I'm gonna have a lot more flexibility um, moving forward. So I am kind of excited about it. I was you know, a little distraught a little bit um, earlier in the week, but you know, if you really think about what it is that you need to accomplish to, to do your job, you'll find that there are more than one solutions. And you know, like I said, I'm gonna have two different spot Forex accounts as well as a futures account. So I think I'm going to be in good shape moving forward. Um, time will tell though. So stay tuned and you guys will see how this uh, plays out moving forward. Now let's jump over to the chart and look at the USD JPY currency pair. Now looking at the dollar again, the dollar again has had a strong run, right? Dollar's been really strong this year. And one thing to look at, if we look left, we can basically see that we have from here down to here, and the markets came in to respect this level and it's, it's trying to bounce out of this level. MACD is trying to pinch together below the zero line. So it hasn't quite, quite crossed yet, but you know, potential that it, it could get a little bit of a bounce. I don't like as weak as it closed on Friday. It was a little bit weak. Um, so the jury's still out. And as far as that's concerned, the level that I'm really keying in on though, on this daily chart is going to be right up in this area for this dollar yen. This is really where we had the real big breakout move. And the market has not come back to test this level yet. Therefore, I think there is a possibility, you know, in the future moving forward that the dollar yen could come down and test um, roughly, let me put the crosshairs on. We could come down and test between the 107.50s and the 106, 106 106.80, we'll call it. All right, that's going to be a level I'm going to watch at, watch for. Now, one, one other thing that makes this level kind of interesting, if we use our Fibonacci retracement tool, swing low right here, down to swing high, or up to swing high, I should say. The key numbers that I tend to focus on are the 61.8 and the 78.6. Well, the 61.8 line matches up perfectly with a swing point, which, you know, definitely gives me a little bit um, more confidence that you know the, the currency pair may want to trade down to that level. Now at that point, we're gonna have a decision and we'll see if we get an entry technique down around this level if the USD JPY does indeed make it down to that level. Like always guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and remember, subscribe, like, and leave a comment below this video. Till next time guys, good luck and good trading.